the eleventh property is Parseval's power theorem. This theorem originates from a theorem about series given in 1799 by Marc Antoine Parseval, and later the theorem was used in Fourier series expansion. So first I will give you the theorem and then we will prove it. So let's assume there is a signal xt and this signal is having the complex exponential Fourier coefficient equal to cn and the signal is having the time period equal to t0. Now if you calculate the average power of signal xt, let's represent the average power by p sub xt then the average power will be equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity absolute value of cn whole squared. So this is the Marc Antoine Parseval's power theorem and this theorem is very important. Using this theorem we can easily calculate the average power of the given signal if we know its complex exponential Fourier coefficient. So let's move to the proof of this theorem. We know the complex exponential Fourier series expansion of a given signal xt. It is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity cn which is the coefficient of signal xt multiplied to e power jn omega naught t. Now I will take the conjugate on both the sides. On the left hand side I have conjugate of signal xt and on the right hand side I have summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity cn conjugate multiplied to e power minus jn omega naught t. We have negative sign here because of conjugate. Initially we had positive sign here. Now what will happen if I multiply signal xt and signal xt conjugate? I will give you one simple example to understand what will happen when we multiply xt and xt conjugate. In this example I will assume a complex number z and it is equal to a plus ib. Now if we take the conjugate of z we will have a minus ib and we know mod of z is equal to under root a square plus b square or we can say mod of z square is equal to a square plus b square. Now we will multiply z and z conjugate this will give us a square minus i square b square. i square is equal to minus 1. So we have a square plus b square and this is equal to z multiplied to z conjugate. So a square plus b square is equal in the two equations. This means left hand side of the two equations are also same. So z multiplied to conjugate of z is equal to magnitude of z whole square. Now in the same way we will write xt multiplied to xt conjugate. We will have magnitude of xt whole square, magnitude or mod of xt whole square and we know the formula of average power. The average power of signal xt is equal to 1 over t0 integration 0 to t0 mod xt whole square dt. Mod xt whole square we can write xt multiplied to xt conjugate. So we have 1 over t0 integration 0 to t0 xt multiplied to xt conjugate dt. xt conjugate is equal to this. So we have 1 over t0 integration 0 to t0 signal xt multiplied to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity cn conjugate multiplied to e power minus jn omega naught t. cn conjugate multiplied to e power minus jn omega naught t dt. Now we will rearrange this and we have summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity cn conjugate 1 over t0 integration 0 to t0 
signal x t multiplied to e power minus j n omega naught t dt. Now if you look at the rearranged formula you will find 1 over t naught integration 0 to t naught x t multiplied to e power minus j n omega naught t dt is the formula of complex exponential Fourier coefficient c n. So we can write the average power of signal x t is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity conjugate of c n multiplied to c n. And from here we can write c n conjugate multiplied to c n equal to mod c n square. So average power of signal x t is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity mod c n whole square. So we have proved the Parseval's power theorem and in the next presentation we will solve one example of Parseval's power theorem and in this way we have completed all the important properties of Fourier series expansion.